Hey everybody, before we get started, I just wanted to tell you about my friend Pat Pattison's channel. It's called Best of California Awards with Pat Pattison, and it's all about places and people of interest in California. For some reason, Pat thought that that might be me, so he, <laughs> he interviewed me about my career and my life, and I know all of you have just been dying to hear about that. So uh, we did a Zoom call. I did it on my iPad in my face, and I look like a cross between the Crypt Keeper and a Thanksgiving Day Parade blimp. Uh, but other than that, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun because you learn more than you'll ever need to know about me. It's short, mercifully, and you can just, you know, wear earplugs or hold your nose or wrap a towel around your head. Uh, you'll survive it. And uh, I would really appreciate it if you'd head over to his channel and give the video some love and some views. Uh, Pat's a good guy, and I uh, want to make sure his channel gets, grows up to be big and strong. Thanks for doing that, and now let's get on to the video you came here to watch. Boom! Oh, self-promotion at its finest. David sent in this. It's a bobblehead. Remember bobbleheads? <laughs> now, it's not that complex a piece. We're gonna cast the body solid. That's simple enough. It is hollow in this piece, but we're gonna cast it solid because it's so small and because bobbleheads like to have uh, a, a, a solid base. And we're gonna hollow cast the head. Again, it's a, ba a really simple, small little roto cast. So you know what the real trick to bobbleheads are? I know this because I actually worked on a toy program where we made bobbleheads. And the hardest thing about making a bobblehead is getting the spring right. It's all in the spring action, because if you have too stiff a spring, it just kind of goes, it just, ah, oh, oh no, I broke him. I can't believe I broke him. Uh, I just made a huge amount more work for myself. Oh crap, crap on a cracker. Okay, you know what I love about sculpture? I just broke Mr. Bobble here which just meant a good hour of extra work for me. No big deal, but because uh, he was already broken and, uh, and David had repaired him once. But uh, so it's not like this was a precious antique, but it is a little extra work for me. But what I'll say about sculpture, you can always fix them. <laughs> so let's get on and fix them. So what I was saying was before I had this unfortunate horror befall me, uh, the whole trick is the spring too stiff a spring and it just vibrates like this. It doesn't bobble. Too bobbly a spring, too weak a spring, and it just the head just flops over like this. And it just, it's no good. It's absolutely no good. So we got to get the right spring. That's the whole thing. Other than that, I'll get him fixed. <laughs> we'll get some molds made and we'll get on and we'll make castings of this piece. Uh, one more thing to do. Oh, goody. Way to go. Good job, Bob. Having broken this guy and after fix it, you might be asking, how am I going to do that? So I'm just going to begin by taping the pieces all back together with these little strips of blue painter's tape. So let's break out the five minute epoxy, which is my go to fix anything in the world material. Here's a handy trick. Just keep your five minute epoxy in a, in a container and uh, all the epoxy runs to the bottom as these little jars run out. It's a pain to wait for it to come out the nozzle. That should be more than enough. Dispense out a couple of worms of five minute and mix it up. Quick, quick, quick. One of my all-time favorite objects is five minute epoxy. That should be more than sufficiently mixed. So what we want to do is we want to find the wound down at the bottom. Now there's no way you're going to be able to see what I'm doing here. So I'm painting the interior of all the cracks, basically building a plastic bridge since it's not going to affect the function of this bobblehead at all. And what it will do is hold these pieces together very strongly. And then over on this side where there's kind of a spider web of breaks, I want to make sure I get them all over this whole area. All right, I think step one is complete. That should hold that in just fine. We'll let that set. Then we'll go on to step two. What we need to do is to plug this hole. So I'm going to use toilet paper. Just use what you got. 
use whatever you have at hand. And I'm just going to attach that so that it stays in position. I just want that to hold into position long enough for me to get a decent tracing. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to kind of rub it, do really more of a rubbing than a tracing. And that gives me a really pretty accurate idea as to the size of the hole. Nice. Done. Excellent. And now all we have to do is cut it out. And we'll cut accurately to our trace line. And that should give us a cardboard surface that will patch this really well. What you don't want to do on the first go <laughs> is make it too small. You make it too small and it just falls through. Or you have just humongous gaps to close up. That just causes you problems. Okay, so I have one last little bit to go and I've got it right in here. Right in here. And my waxer is nice and hot. I can feel it. Boy, that's pretty tight. That's not bad. A little more bend. Good. That sets right in there. So now you know what time it is. We all know what time it is. <sighs> break time to break out the sticky wax. What would we do without our sticky wax? Break out the sticky wax. Go all around with it. Great thing about sticky wax is you get it hot. It stays sticky for a while. So it's like a great little adhesive. There we go. Nice. All right. Blue sprue wax. I'm just going to go around and where I like it, where I think it's good, like right in there, I'm going to tack it. Where I think it needs to be pushed down, I can push it down. I'm wanting a thicker wax. I'm wanting some sculpting wax in that hole right there. So let's give it some sculpting wax. Just fill that right in. Okay, you get it. I'm just gonna wax this up and we are gonna be ready to mount the sprue on there. I'm just gonna flow sculpture wax on there and get it waxed. And the advantage to using wax in this situation is now I can go around and smooth it, sculpt it, clean it up, make it as pretty as I want. And um, it's also going to be super easy to attach the, the uh, pour spout to it. And we will do that as well. All right. Very good. Got that done. Time to build some mold cases for these two. And I'm going to build them about as simple as possible. Bring this over here. We need to make the mold case for the body, uh, the simplest mold case known to humanity, and that is a cup mold case. So all I need is a base for this. So let's mark out about like that, and about like this. So we have a little bit of extra. Let's see if I marked out enough. About like that. About like that. Put this on here like that. About like that. These are not, as you can see, super precision measurements. They don't have to be. And we'll just cut it about to there. And that is going to give us the base for the cup. The next thing we need to determine is how big is the box. We're just going to build a simple box for the bobblehead. Very simple box. Doesn't because it's rotation mold, doesn't have to be anything fancy. So let's just lay out a 90 degree. And let's set our kit inside that. And doing the old drop-down method, let's put him uh, I don't want him super close because the cuts are gonna be on the side. So I want a bigger parting line in here. So let's do a little bit more rubber than I would otherwise do. That's going to be just plenty. Do I have a quarter of an inch in the front? No, I do not. Let's slide it back. That's a good quarter of an inch. We don't want to starve this boy. That's a good half an inch. Okay, so we'll put a mark over here about the same thing, about a half an inch away. And we'll drop a line in a little closer, maybe a quarter of an inch. Well, right on that line will do us. 
because I am going to be marking this out, let's go ahead and bring it to an even thing. So let's call that three inches on this side. Let's call this three, and that's the front, by uh, three and an eighth. Three by three and an eighth. All this is literally a piece of scrap flooring that I scrounged. Once again, it's scrounged. And we know we, our rotator is 18 inches. We're going to make a mold case that is also the cradle for the rotator. And so we're going to use this piece of wood. And I'm too lazy to go get my tape. This is a 12 inch rule. Put a mark 12. Put a mark to 6. That brings me to 18. This measurement is non-critical. One more thing to do, which I forgot to do almost, is I forgot to measure the height above the head. Now how high? Watch it, it's gonna be three inches. It's about a square thing. That's about <laughs> that's about as perfect a globe as you can get. Now let's build it to three inches and it doesn't have to be poured to the full three. So we're really looking at a three by three by three box. All right, let's cut some wood. Away we go. Okay, I got all the wood pieces cut and uh, got them all done. I also got them marked out and drilled, so they're ready to go. So we got all the pieces ready to go. This is the base for that boy up there. We're going to use that cup. We'll get to him in a minute. But for right now, this is a simple one-piece cradle. That's the thing that attaches the mold to the rotator. Break out the sticky wax. I want him to be reasonably well put on there. Nice amount of sticky wax. Not going to be cheap with the old sticky wax. Okay, let's set him in place. I'm just going to set him lightly in place. Nope, too much over. Need to be able to move him over. Okay, he's good there, good there, good there. Plenty, plenty, plenty. Good there. Oh, yeah. I think he's just about right, right where he's at. And now, we want to break out the old blue sprue, and we want to seal up around the base. Just sealing up around the base of the neck. So I'll go around and do that. Okay, I feel like he's on there. One last check, check, check. Yep, plenty of room, got air around him. He's gonna be just fine. All right, next thing to do is we're gonna put this boy into his case. So let's put him aside. I pre-drilled all these holes, so theoretically they ought to go together one way and one way only. All right, those should be pretty tight. Now our boy lodges in here. Should drop right in, and it did. Okay, all right now. They should just go on there, just perfectly. Last screw, and it's done. Been and around, so he's ready to fill. I do not anticipate much leakage in this mold. It's pretty tight. I don't see any air. Let me tell you. It's tight mold. Good. That one's ready to go. 
Now for this boy, this is a simple job. All we have to do is mount him in like this. The funny thing is he kind of leans. <laughs> you see that? Boop. He's not straight. Oh well, I didn't make him. I'm just casting him. I'm just a happy mold maker. What do I know? I'm gonna cut, cut a hole in the top here. And I'm gonna see if that's what I'm gonna do. I might cut the cup down, but I'm not sure yet. Let me look and see. Let me see what we got going on inside this cup. Can you see down in there? It's pretty dark. But yeah, he's in there. He's looking good. Tell you what, let me make a little mark so I know where this corner is. Has the corner. Okay. Just a little bit of stickage. It's not going to take a lot. It's going to take more sealage than stickage. Okay, let's put him on. Then we go around. Uh, yeah, he's pretty gappy under there. I would say so, yeah. He's definitely gappy under there. Let's see if this is going to do us, do us proud or not. I'll do one edge and evaluate. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. That stuff is miraculous. Fills it right up. Don't exactly. Okay. All right, he is sealed now. Next thing to do is to put on the cup. Run a bead of stickage around. This is maybe the simplest kind of mold I know how to make. Cup mold. One piece cut mold in a cup. That is as simple as a mold case gets. I just need to make sure we put it on there. It's not going to be centered on the base exactly because he's leaning, so I'm going to put him closer to these two edges right here. And then, same drill as before. Break out the blue sprue. And this one we really want to make sure is sealed up. When the sprue gets too short, weld two of them together. Like that. Let that cool. And you can go back to this one. That we had to weld the shorty on. It's just like welding, except with wax and paper and wood and plastic. And let's give it a look. And it is tight and watertight, perfect. Mold done. That's it. That's how easy it is to make a mold case using this method. Let's go mix some rubber and pour some rubber. All right, I mixed up a big bucket of rubber. Let's pour this thing. I'm going to start, I think I'll start by pouring our boy over here from the back corner. And then I'll check for leakage. And then I'll start the other one. I'm going to pour them both at the same time. Bottom up pour as always, because we always pour from the bottom up, as you guys know. Those of you who watch this channel know what the drill is. So we just pour. That's all there is to it. Okay, let that sit for a minute. And let's start. Now this one, I want to make sure I'm pouring back down the, pour down the back. Come on. There we go. Here it comes. I tilted the cup so that I could pour down this, the back side. Not sure how effective that was. I'm going to check that. See what I, where I'm at. All right, let's look at my progress here. This boy looks like he's doing well. If I caught a bubble back there, that'll rise out. Let's go back to this one and really pour it. Let's really pour this boy. Dump it. There's really no need to be shy. It's just a globe-shaped thing. So let's get this thing poured. That one's done. All right, the molds are poured and we'll let them set up overnight. <laughs> and tomorrow we'll cut them and we'll make some resins. All right, <laughs> it's been 24 hours. Hard as rock, ready to go. Let's cut these things open. Let us begin by getting rid of the paper. I don't like having paper under me when I'm cutting molds. Gets in the way. And anyway, it's munged up. Tabletop is just like that.
Can he do it? Can he do it? I doubt it. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. Total fail. Okay, we'll cut that out. Okay, let's cut some molds open. This should just pop off. No, doesn't want to pop off. All right, be that way. Let's cut, let's cut it off then. Let's just cut this off. This is kind of why I don't like paper cut molds. I'd rather have plastic cut molds. Come on, baby. All right, this is being a pelt. I'm gonna have to just slice around it. That wax is holding on pretty good. It's pretty good. Okay. Ooh. Wow, that thing is fragile. Holy moly, that compo is fragile. Wow. Wowee. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Well, one more thing to fix. That was an unintended consequence of that, but they are thin wall. It looks like some kind of compo. Some old material. Okay, I will take the time to cut this off carefully, and we will repair that. <sighs> okay, we'll trim that up. Let's go on, keep going on. Let's get this one ready to come apart. No worries. Okay, same with that. This should. Pop off, did. This should, same thing. Let's break this free, this edge. Okay, this one's already broken free. I should just come right off. There we go. Got a little seepage under there, no big deal, but see, it wants to bond. See, if it, it can hardly see it, but this rubber is wanting to bond to that. That's not waxed wood, that's naked wood. And the rubber is bonding to it. You can see that the rubber has seeped down into the pores and the sticking is serving as kind of a weak adhesive. Same with on this side. This would just peel right off had that been waxed. But I didn't wax it because it was finished on the key side and I just didn't bother. So that's what's causing my problems now. Okay, got rid of that. Now for this fun deal. For this fun deal. Is that going to pop right off or what, are we going to break this again? We've already broken that once. I have a feeling, oh no, plug came out, good. All right, let's start by cutting this mold. These are the sides here. Let's begin by cutting this one open. Cut jaggy as always. You can see that I'm cutting jagged. But also you can see that my jaggies are not crazy. See those jaggies in there? They're not crazy jagged, they're just jagged. On the other side, same thing. And when you come to the, to the line right at the body of the casting, you don't cut jagged. You try your best to make a nice, straight, clean cut at the body and jag it away from the body. That way, the parting line is straight and clean and tight, but the mold halves lock together. So straight at the body as much as you can, and then as you come away from the body, that's when you cut your jaggies. It's these little refinements. You know, does it matter? You know, it's not a huge deal, but these little refinements are what make the difference between just an amazing parting line and no cleanup, no, for, no work, and uh, having to do a lot of work. Now, 
Oh, this is like eggshell, this material. Wow, it is soft. Soft and easily broken. Good to know. Didn't know that. Okay, now I should be outside of the thing. I don't I want to cut as little as I can. Cutting down to the stem of the neck. Right there, I got down to it. Okay, now I know I can get that out of there. Don't want to do any more damage at this thing than I've already done. All right, let's save the parts gently and neatly so we can reassemble him in a minute. Shake out any crap in the mold. Let's see what we got. Yeah, clean mold, no worries. And you can see the jaggies. See how straight the parting line is at the cut? But all the jaggies away from it. This is what I'm talking about. You don't need to do. You don't need to do crazy cutting. You, need, you don't need to go like this. You just don't. This will close together. Just like that. Look at that. Look how nice that closes up. That's what we want to see. We want to see it close up like that. When it closes up like that, you're going to have a near invisible parting line. Let's cut the head. I made a notch in the mold because that tells me where the front is. Frankly, I didn't know. I took the thing apart went, oh no, what's the front? So I went back to the video and this is, by the way, a really good idea. Uh, when you're mold making, it's a really smart idea to, to document every step with photography. Get your phone out and just take pictures at every step. It is very useful sometimes uh, when you're cutting apart a mold to have photographs of the vent and sprue and everything layout, the layout of how the piece lays in the mold. If you don't remember that, uh, it's really useful to refresh your memory with short videos or at least photographs. Uh, and prior to the age of digital photography, we just didn't have that, that luxury, so we would have to make sketches of what we were doing. So again, I'm gonna cut jagged away from the body of the part, the mass of the part, Straight in the middle, jagged, jagged, jagged. See how I'm, I'm just, I'm cutting jagged, but I'm not going nuts on the jaggies. There's no need and it's counterproductive. And I harp on that because I see it all the time in the, in the projects. When people send me pictures of their projects that they're working on that they're having trouble with, that is a recurring theme, is insane deranged jaggies. Okay, getting that, come in here. Basically, to cut jaggies, you just have to sort of vary the direction of your, of your knife edge. You just kind of wiggle your knife edge and just in, in both directions, up, down, and side to side, so you don't create a sawtooth pattern, you create more like a mountain range pattern. Okay, now is that enough? To free his soul. I want to cut the least I can cut. That should free him out. Yeah. Come on. I don't want to break him. I've broken this guy so much. Oh no. I'm trying not to break him. He's very fragile because he's already been broken. Although I'll bet the repairs that I made, there's so much epoxy on the inside of this thing. This guy's probably tougher, but he came out just fine. Let's take a look at the mold. Any flaws in our mold? Little wax chips, knock out the wax chips. Something stuck right there. What's that? What's that? And that's just the material stuck on there. Are we getting any are we getting inhibition there? No, it's just kind of sticking. You know, that material that, that it's made of, whatever it is, uh, it's it's really porous. It's almost like a paper mache. It's a weird material. Okay. And look at that thing. That should close up. Just fine and dandy. Yep. It's going to close up really neat. Okay. We are pretty much ready to go. We'll just do some light trimming on the mold. Just to kind of take the edges off. Make it a little neater looking and a little bit easier to handle. Okay, now all I have to do is mount this boy back into his cradle. 
it's going to reassemble like that. I'll get that done and we will be ready to spin it. But for now, we're out of time. Next week, we're going to spin them, pour them, and clean the castings. Uh, and then we got to see if we can find a spring <laughs> that will make that head bobble properly. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video, and I will see you next week.